Hey, welcome back, guys. I've had a lot of requests to go over the saws uh, and how I made them in my video about making a vocal synthesizer. So we're gonna really quick brush up on this and uh, we're gonna start off with a new software instrument. Open up Alchemy. This is actually a deceivingly simple sound. It sounds pretty complex, but we're gonna go to Advance, make sure everything's just default. And go to Oscillator A. Come over here, uh, just a basic saw wave. Bring it up to about, I don't know, eight or nine voices. Uh, Detune down to about, you know, the high 30s. We'll bring down a MIDI clip to make sure it sounds okay. That's really loud. Uh, so when you do this, obviously you add, when you add more voices, you're gonna have to adjust the volume of the oscillator accordingly. Otherwise you're clipping like crazy. All right, it's just a, a basic unison saw wave. Um, so we're gonna do the same thing on the second one, turn it on, except we're gonna go up an octave, 12 semitones. We're gonna do this not as extreme, maybe about five or six. Um, bring this way down, let's say about 23% on the detune. Volume goes down as well. The next one's going to be a centered saw to, to kind of because when you add uh, when you add unison, it makes it really wide. You need a sound directly in the middle just to give it a backbone. So let's go to uh, these saws and just do vintage one or something, and the volume down on that as well. You hear that nice and full sound. Uh, we're also going to take the release down because of the way we're we're doing the uh, the MIDI clip right now. I mean maybe. You want some release on it if you want to make it softer sounding, but the way that I'm using it with the drums and everything, this is uh, this is what sounds best. Okay, so that's pretty much it for that one. Um, usually afterwards, I'll I'll put a little bit more modulation. Um, tastefully, of course, you don't want to wreck this sound, so bring this down a bit. And see, this is so it's gross. It's gross. Just be tasteful with it and it really improves the sound. Okay, and another thing we do is we make a, a track stack or uh, send them to the same bus. So uh, we'll do this again. We'll make another. Very similar setting on this Alchemy plugin here. Um, except this time we're going to do all sorts of funky modulation at the top end. Same, basically the same thing as oscillator uh, B the last time, except let's go up 24 and copy that MIDI clip down. It's so loud. And basically I'm doing this just uh, so that we don't have to worry about adding a bunch of effects in that same VST. We're going to... Uh, have this one just completely crazy out here a little tremolo um but first put a slow chorus on it actually we'll do the tremolo after these two so uh to put them to make sure they're organized let's shift and enter where the track is selected and rename them And uh, hold shift, click both the tracks. Hit X on the keyboard, brings up the mixer down here. And where it says stereo out, we'll just bust them. Uh, that's my other synth stack. So we'll do 20 to keep it uh, not as confusing. So and we'll rename this. And anything you do to this uh, channel strip obviously is going to affect the sum of these two. So uh, it's very convenient when you're using compression or EQ on basically your final mix down or whatever. It just helps you keep things in line and uh, dial in the sound a bit. I never pulled down the release on that new high one, so let's do that. It's adds more modulation to this thing. Uh, something crazy like uh, scanner vibrato, maybe. I 
I think I like the stereo diffuser the best. It's like the the least transformative, but um, it's kind of soft too. So let's just cut out all the lows in this since we have a pretty fat sound beneath it. And this one, since we're going to have an 808 as well, let's just, just high pass it. Something pretty extreme like in the 90s. Look at that. <laughs> and what I did to the one on top uh, up here, the, the original, here, I'll let you hear that real quick. So this is the sound that everybody was asking about in the comments. Okay, there it is. Now, I think the most interesting part of this sound isn't the just the standard unison saws, because that dead horse has been beat and beat and beat. I think the, the coolest part of this particular sound is afterwards I had a, a tremolo on it that kind of sent it to the side in a subtle way. Uh, I think it was maybe half, um, but really not that extreme i'll go check that in just a second but anyways you're also going to want to pitch bend i mean adding pitch bend to things adds tension and uh can really just accentuate the sound and, and make it less stagnant which is very important and let's see exactly what i did with that uh tremolo we'll just copy it okay so it was yeah an eighth dotted, the depth is about 48%, and it's moved it all the way out. The phase was minus 10, so we'll just copy that. Yeah, interesting. And we'll do this after compression so it doesn't kind of cancel out the, uh, the modulation. Sounds cool too, stripped down, but anyways, <laughs> that's not what we were doing here. So yeah, there you go, there's the basic sound. Um, and as for the 808, somebody else asked about the 808 in this as well. Uh, it's very, very simple. I just did the ES2 legato, a little bit of FM. It's a saw wave up 12. And uh, I took the, the oscillator over here and routed it kind of halfway to the filter on the left, uh, filter number one, and I just shaved the lows out of that and used the sign as the bass signal on this. So there you have it. After that, I, I've been using, rather than side chain compression, uh, let me show you this real quick. It's something else, bonus tip here. <laughs> I do this on every track now. So you can obviously set up um, a side chain on the bass that ducks from the signal of the kick. Uh, you just route the kick drum to its own bus here. I always use bus nine for my kick and uh, make sure the signal goes out there and then open up a compressor. I mean, it, this is just in case you don't know about side chain compression. I assume that most of you do. 
up here in the side chain, you choose, okay, bus nine for the kick and you adjust it accordingly. Make sure it's on peak and not some detection. And then uh, usually you want to do a pretty quick release unless you're doing it for dramatic effect or I don't know. It's all stylistic choices here from, from here on out, but auto gain always off. Make sure it's at zero here and then play around with the threshold as you get the kick coming in. That's pretty extreme because I already have one on here. But anyways, that's the compressor. But the newest noise gate has a ducking option. It's incredible. So you do the same thing. Input uh, is 9 or whatever you use for your kick. I think now you don't even have to do that. Yeah, see, you can do straight from the instruments now. I just like to keep it clean and uh, I'm a creature of habit as well. So anyways, it's the same concept. Do the threshold, how much it ducks down. Uh, this is like your ratio kind of, except it will cut the sound completely out. Smooth it out a little bit here. Check this out. It's so clean. So yeah, use that uh, noise gate, believe it or not, for side chaining bass because it's so clean and uh, gets all that sound out of the way. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, smash that motherfucking like button. Let's get to three trillion likes. Can we do this? Let's do it. Smash.